Hello there, this is Alex Van Arsdale. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial video on how I drew this picture of Atlas, uh, all the way from the sketch to the finished picture. I'm just kind of going over my tips and tricks that I've learned, and uh, just going through my process with my commentary. The video will be sped up, so it's not... It took me about an, a better portion of a day to do, but I filmed it in a small section so we can have it in one long video. Um, as I like to begin, I always begin with a gray background. That way, it's easier on my eyes. I don't have to strain looking at it. And by the time I get to coloring, I can see when I put white down. There's been a lot of times when I get to my backgrounds and I see the character's teeth or eyes aren't showing through all the way. I didn't color them because my background was white. So that just fixes that a little bit. Um, my brush tool in Photoshop is... Um, set to a pin pressure taper, so the harder I push, the thicker the line, the more bold the line, the softer I push, the thinner and softer the line. Uh, I have it set on a low opacity so that it, it'll simulate real sketching. Um, I go over a line a couple times and it gets darker. And that makes it easier when you are trying to sketch out a pose because you can, if there's something you like, you can sketch it in. You're not, once you put down a line, it's not solid. And then I'll make a secondary layer over my sketch layer, and this is my uh, second sketch layer. I always do two sketches because the first one is just to get the rough movement and shape, and this one is just the more detailed of the one underneath. The reason why I make a copy and I don't just start drawing this over my other sketch is because if there's something, if I start getting off and there's something that I had in my sketch that I liked, I still have it. I can get back to it, and it's not gone. And that helps. I've found myself several times having to go back to my sketch because I lost that initial feeling or flow that I had in it by the time I got to the finished product. Drawing um, sketching poses is, is very difficult, but um, the more you do it, the, the easier it becomes. And I, a lot of times I'll, I will tell everyone, reference. Make Always look at how people pose, how animals pose, look at real life because a lot of the great masters even, they always painted from something. They never just made this stuff up in their mind. Um, some artists even make you know sculptures to draw from. And that really helps because you get a three-dimensional view of your character. I mean, you could draw them from any angle you want, which really helps. And also, um, consistency. You always want to have a character sheet nailed down, what you want your character to look like, and they maintain that look throughout the story. That way, you know, there's been so many times where I've started drawing a character, and I pull up their character sheet, and I'm, mm, no, their nose isn't quite right, or that doesn't look like, their eyes don't necessarily have that shape to them. It's just, it just helps having reference because you have something concrete to look to. Look to. And uh, the gun here for Atlas, I just kind of came made up on the fly. Um, I enjoy making laser guns. They're a lot of fun. You could just mix and match shapes, and they always come out looking unique and interesting. These, uh, the boots for the Super Strike Aliens has always been a lot of fun. I'm thinking of how it'll wrap around the foot, and because they're not like our shoes. And so you, you kind of have some fun to play with there. And as you see here, I've been playing, tweaking around with my proportions. Uh, I made Atlas's wings a little bit bigger. And since his wings come to the edge of the page, I decided just to go ahead and shrink him into the wings a little bit instead of taking time to make the page bigger and scaling the wings up. Now I'm onto my final uh, ink layer, which I make a layer above my, my second sketch layer and hide my first sketch layer. That way my lines are, my second sketch lines are cleaner than the first sketch, and I can be, begin my inking. My ink lines, as of recently, I've been really looking into the classic comics, you know, the original Spider-Man, the old Batman, trying to get a feel for how they made the old comics. They had a really neat look to them. They were all hand done, even even the colors. They would cut them out with, with exacto knives and place them by hand. Very difficult and very time consuming, but it paid off in the long run. So I'm trying to make my comics look as much like that as I can. 
uh, one of the things I've been doing was uh, making them, making my ink for my pen tool at 98%. So it has this little bit of washing or like grayish areas where the ink isn't 100% black. And that kind of gives it a more hand done feel. Uh, before my comics, I was a very, it was very vectory, very, uh, very sharp lines, and I feel that the new style is a bit more scratchy, a bit more, it feels a bit more alive to me. Uh, you can kind of feel the movement of the characters, the, with the more the shade, scratchy shading and stuff. And to me, I, I like it a bit better. It's, it's not as frustrating when inking it, because you have to worry that every little line is perfectly sealed up and rounded whereas here you know you can have a bit more leeway with it and also you, you gotta love those those solid black shadows throughout in the old comic styles they would utilize black a lot because they were limited on what they could do now for me I do full ranges of colors and gradients and lighting and everything but those black shadows just add a bit to it which I like Atlas's crest gives you trouble sometimes because it's solid black, and if he's in a with a background where it's black behind him, you can't see it. So a lot of the times when I do something like the solid black, if you look at the old comics, they would give him highlights on him, kind of like I'm doing here with the edges, and whatever's behind it, if something's behind it is black, they will give it like a light halo. And see here, I'm looking at Atlas's face. It felt like it was too long, so I'm pushing it back in. I, I do a lot of tweaking with my work, uh, which is, is a plus and a negative to it because when I go to draw on paper, sometimes I find myself relying on my editing too much. And so trying to make it where you know you use it as a tool, but try not to rely on it as mu too much because it can become a, a handicap. Now with the uh, Griffin characters, I've had a hard time with their beaks because beaks are very hard to get proper expression on. They they just don't. There's not much there to move. So what I decided to do, uh, and I think you all noticed that I left uh, the Griffin characters' teeth from the cartoon version. They they had teeth so they could make more expressions. And when I switched over to the more realistic style, I left the teeth. And I did find out that actual bird species do have teeth but they're not like these so but the science behind their beaks in super strike is that they have um, almost like a skin a softer beak around the edge of their mouth then it gets hard on the crest of the nose like a actual bird's beak and up on the point um, so it kind of gives them a mouth so they can form their words and grimace and smile at the same time you know and they're uh, they're not actually birds they are aliens so that does give me a little bit more leeway with playing around with their beaks and stuff and making them feel real and look real without it being like, oh you just gave that bird a cartoon beak so you could make him smile and but I researched it and made it look as real as possible and I think it works sometimes what I like doing with dynamic poses is having a large portion of the character black especially if they're like firing a weapon like the laser gun or something like that or if there's an explosion behind them because it really you can really see the light playing on the character and it, you can see all their little details here and there just by hints of catching light now wings are another fun thing I've been trying to improve my wings uh, they're a difficult subject but they're a lot of fun I like to think of them as big arms with very long fingers that's the easiest way I could describe the way I draw them. Um, I'm steadily been trying to improve them and make them better, but it's just going to be take time to get used to drawing them. And of course, you know, the more you draw them, the easier it becomes. Another thing that's difficult too is knowing where to put your shadows, specifically if they're all going to be jet black. So you have to be sure you don't cover your character in complete black, you know, uh, sometimes 
you see where you know the comic is done a certain way and it looks like characters have just been splashed on their sides with you know buckets of black ink so you have to make it look like real shadow you know where it would cast and where it would be he actually heavy and a lot of times here you'll notice that i'm using like a cross hatching for like slightly lighter shadows to kind of mimic a lighter shadow and when you add color to it, it it always looks really cool when you have that cross hatching in there and like when you go into your dark shadows too you want to do a bit of a little bit of reflected light in the dark shadows it um it may help to where you could see your character's um, shape underneath all the shadow. Because, uh, like, well, notice here on his hand, I go through and make a little bit of a light. Going on, and I erase a little bit of my ink on the inside of his hand there, just to make it look where you can see like, the light catching on the inside of his hand. Little things like that go a long way when you're doing a comic or shading with ink makes it look cool see I, I continue out the belt around where the light will be catching the belt so you can see his belt I mean if I didn't put those in there you wouldn't be able to tell you know his belt was there so you can kind of see his his gear see his outfit get an understanding of, of his anatomy under the clothes the way the clothes, wrinkles are doing and it it all adds up Now when doing large areas of straight lines, a lot of times I'll opt out and use the pen tool and make like a stroke around it on the outside and then come in and make it look a bit more like a hand drawn line. But for this example of this wing, I went ahead and drew by hand around the outside of the wing and got these feathers in. Now a lot of times you see me undoing my line because it wasn't the right shape. I'm making these swish marks with the feathers very quickly. That way they'll have a nice smooth edge to them. And kind of have a feeling of swiftness, you know. If you make them quickly, it'll. But you know, a lot of times too, it's Photoshop doesn't have a, a line smoothing software in it, so you know, a lot of my techniques have kind of been learning to make smooth lines without the smoothing software, which has actually helped me with my traditional drawings a lot more because my hand is a lot more steady. And I can make very quick lines. Now here, I'm going to make his wing black. I am using the Photoshop's pen tool coming around. And I'm going to make his wing jet black. But if you notice, I do it on a layer underneath my ink layer. I make another layer underneath just to go ahead and do this to make it easy. I turn it grayscale so I can see his crest. And I just erase the black where it will be around his crest so we can see it. Um, it's another one of that where you give something black on black a halo. See, now we can see his crest in front of his wing. And I merge those two down, make a little bit of quick corrections there, and we're good to go. And a lot of times, if you notice here, I, when I fill in, I paint around the edge of my shadow with the pen. Then I fill it with a paint bucket tool. But I don't just fill it with black. Because when you fill it with black, it, makes, it will bleed over your lines and make them jagged. So I usually... I found a way to, you fill it with dark gray first, and you get it to where it bleeds into the black line. Then when you paint bucket on it with black, it'll smooth it out, and you won't have to worry about going in and touching up little holes or anything like that. It'll actually make it a solid color, just by using a dark gray color instead of just using black, because black's going to increase the thickness of your outline, and it always looks jagged. I like doing a lot of detail on my character's gear, like I want to draw every, like where they're stitched together, you see their hems, you know, like here on his boot, you see all the little treads and stuff, little details, it, it makes it really look cool in the long run. And another thing that would help with details on gear and clothing, reference sheets. If you have a reference, I have a reference sheet for Atlas. Perfect. Every character I have, I have a reference sheet for, and I always have it pulled up over to the side so that I can see it. 
and look at it as I draw it. That's way their gear always looks consistent and the same. Now here I go to the pen tool again. I'm going to make a black selection on his tail here just to fill that in. And I kind of make it a bit more hand done on the edge here with the, my pen tool. Then I'm going to add like a half a shadow going around his tail. Smooth that out there. Now I'm going to the laser gun. Now with the laser gun on the front here, since it's such an unusual shape, coming up on the tip here. This part I'm doing by hand, but I'm feeling that black. Here we go. Yeah, I use the pen tool here and stroke it. That works as an unusual shape, and it just saves time, makes it a bit easier to use that pen tool. And again, everything in Photoshop is a tool to use to to make your workflow faster, make things quicker and easier. And it's it's good to learn your tools and know them. Now we're going to go to color now. And I turned off my sketch layer. And what I do, I select around him with my magic wand tool. I inverse my selection. Then on a layer underneath, I fill it gray. Then what I can do, I can select that gray layer, which has basically him filled with gray. And on my layer above it, I can start coloring. Now the, my color layer is under my ink layer. So the layers go like this. I have my ink outlines, my color layer, and then that gray base layer, which is just a general silhouette. And I use those to help me with my selection because I can select that gray and not have to worry about keeping my lines. When I'm coloring, I don't have to worry about keeping it inside his lines. And another t helpful tip is, too, when you select that gray, you can go over to your um, layer and diselect what you've colored. That way you don't have to even worry about bleeding over into what you've already colored and you can just cruise and really makes the process faster, a lot easier and a bit more fun because you're able just to focus on his colors. And here on like on his crest I'm adding a dark color and behind his crest there I add the color of his wing. I'm really happy with how his hand and his talons and the glove and everything turn out in this picture. Those, and you can see how when you add the color to it, how much those black shadows, how how neat it makes it look when you have those shadows like that in there. Now I also have uh, my reference sheet pulled up next to Atlas here while I'm doing this and I'm grabbing the colors from his character sheet and here I'm using the true colors of what Atlas's suit will look like without any lighting on it and by the time I'm done I add my lighting to him. Um, in this picture I don't really add any lighting because it's just he's kind of on a gradient background kind of like a gradient comic background for like an action panel so I don't really add any direct lighting to him but when I do add lighting it's basically just a selection of that of his silhouette and I put a color over it, a solid color or a gradient of color, and then I set the layer to color mode and change the brightness of the layer and it kind of gives it an effect of different lighting. It's coming along quite well now and I'm just touching up and finishing up his colors here. And I see here I like getting a lot of little details where like the color bleeds over into another section. I just get all that fixed. And a helpful tip too with Photoshop is that you have two primary colors you can select. And if you press the X button, it switches between those two colors. Like the X on your keyboard is a hot key, it switches between those two colors. So if you're coloring like say for example Alice's fur and his neck, you can grab those two colors and just press X and switch between them. So next I'm going to add that comic half tone and uh, I do that by making a pattern in Photoshop and I fill an empty layer with it over it. And you can make a pattern in Photoshop fairly easy, just Google how to create patterns and I'm sure there's other ways to do it in other programs as well. 
and I put it like on overlay or multiply. It just depends on how you want your image to look. And here I feel a black layer above him for the shadow, and I turn its opacity down, and then I get a, ma a layer mask on it and begin to knock out where the highlights are are actually brighter. This gives your picture even a little bit more dimension because you already have the shading on him from the ink lines, but it just helps push it a little bit. Next I add like a, another texture to it, and this is a texture I've been adding to my comics for quite a while. It's just a, a sheet of scanned inkjet paper with the level that's adjusted to where it's very dark, multiplied over my image. And now I'm adding the background, which is just an orange gradient behind Atlas to make it look like an action panel. And I'm getting my dots on there. Now I'm selecting his outlines. Uh, not his outlines, I'm sorry, his highlights, and I'm making a separate layer. With, I just select the mask I used on the shadow layer to get his highlights, and I'm painting them red. Then I change it to linear dodge, and that allows it to look like he's got more like direct red lights shining on him. Now for my glowing effects, I just use the Photoshop layer inner and outer glow effects on it and then I go over it on another layer with a little bit of linear dodge just to make it look a little brighter and that's what I'm kind of doing here with him now adding a little bit of linear dodge over him to look like the background's glowing around him then here I'm going to add his laser firing same principle I just, I'm just painting it in there and it has that glow effect already applied to it makes it really easy Now for the fonts here, I'm going to create, it's fairly simple, I'm using like a blocky font like impact, kind of changing a little bit with a little bit of distortion to make it look exciting. And then what I do, I selected the text with my selection tool, make a new layer, and create a gradient in it, red and white. Then I'll add a stroke in the layer effects to the edge of it. and then. That's it. You have some really cool looking comic sound effects letters. Now for my, I use like a Comic Sans style comic font for my speech bubbles. Then I use the circle tool to make most of my speech bubbles and then the pen tool to make the little part coming down. And then I add a stroke to the inside of it and turn the opacity down some. And that should be it. That's the whole thing. It's all finished. I hope you all got a lot out of this recording, and I hope you enjoy it. See you all later.